have studied a number of uh, blocks with uh, which we can make with op amps, amplifiers and uh, filters and so on. And we know that uh, and we realized all of these things using negative feedback and we know that of course, sometimes it can become unstable. We know how to make them stable also by using uh, a criteria on loop gain, we can make them uh, stable so that they do not burst into oscillation. Obviously, because once a circuit is unstable, the uh, natural response will overwhelm the force response. Okay. Circuit always has some natural response and some force response. The point with uh, stable systems is that the natural response will eventually die out and the output will be the force response. Okay. So, uh, we do not want the natural response to either blow up or even be constant with time, we want it to decay with time in uh, case of amplifiers and uh, filters. Okay. Because these are all blocks in which there is some input and the output should have some definite relationship with the input. Uh, in reality of course, even if you have uh, uh, right half plane poles where the natural response tends to blow up, the nonlinearities of the system like the saturation of the op amp will limit it. But anyway, such systems are useless and it also does not matter where the instability is, the frequency uh, which shows up because of instability, because once it is unstable, your normal operation goes to pieces. Okay. And I think now by now you know how to make system stable, you are familiar with loop gain criteria and so on. Now of course, there is now a class of systems in which we want instability, okay. some control type of instability. Where is that? Oscillators. And why do you need oscillators? Yeah, basically everything needs oscillator, right. So, even digital circuits, essentially the way you make digital circuits is by doing step by step computation and how do you control what a step is, the clock cycle is what controls what the step is, right. It uh, defines the amount of time allowed for each step. So, one step you calculate something and the next step you do something else and the next step you do something else and so on. So, you are familiar with uh, I think sequential state machines, that is exactly how it works, right. Each time you encounter a clock edge it goes through some transition of states and then the next time it is something else and so on. And I mean every digital circuit at uh, is it is a state machine basically. Okay. Of course, the state machine can be immensely compli complicated, but it is a state machine. So, you need them to define these clocks, essentially periodic intervals in which you do computation. And not only that, you need uh, them to for instance, you also know that to uh, go from uh, continuous time to discrete time representations, you need sampling with uniform intervals. For that also you need a clock, so that comes from an oscillator. Uh, so, there are so many places where you need clocks. Uh, similarly, when you are in a radio, you have a signal, let us say the voice signal or some other data signal and that has to be modulated to a high frequency carrier. The high frequency carrier is nothing but a periodic signal at a very high frequency. So, that is another place where you need an oscillator. And also, uh, you know that the way you test anything is by applying sine waves of different frequencies and the way to get that is also by one of the ways to get that is by using an oscillator. Okay. There is no forcing function, right. Uh, the oscillator basically the natural response is the output. That's it. The natural response you design it so that it is self sustaining uh, with some period well defined period and that is it, that is the output. An oscillator does not have an input. I mean it can have an input in that, it can have an input which controls the frequency of oscillation, right. So, that is possible, but uh, it is not uh, the kind of an input you would see in an amplifier where the output is proportional to the input. Okay. So, it does have an input, but the oscillation itself is a result of uh, instability. So, that is actually the natural response of the system. Right? Is that okay? So, now, we can uh, look at how to make oscillators. Of course, if you go to the lab and try to make an amplifier, it becomes an oscillator and if you try to make an oscillator, it probably will not oscillate. So, I think you will have experience in both, but perhaps not in the way you want it. So, where do we need this? Clock source for uh, digital circuits and sampling and 
uh, actually this is uh, sinusoidal it does not necessarily have to be and then also ok an oscillator is an autonomous circuit meaning it does not have an input signal. It can have controlling inputs like the way I mentioned you can have a control on the frequency and you do need to have that because everything has to be electronically controlled you will have some electronic control of the frequency of oscillation, but uh, you do not have an input signal in normal sense ok and there are literally like thousands of types of oscillators we cannot possibly study all of them, but we will just outline some uh, basic principles ok and we will not even go into every detail of uh, the oscillator ok. And because you know something about amplifiers essentially you know that to make an oscillator you should get it into the unstable mode that is you have to make the phase margin negative or you have to make L of s equal to minus 1 at some particular frequency then it will burst into oscillation at that frequency ok. So, we will look at a few examples of uh, oscillators and I choose these examples based on their relative popularity ok. And while I said that uh, we need uh, like for instance to generate uh, signal sources for testing we need oscillators this is not always how it is designed ok. For instance you can have some underlying high frequency oscillator and a digital to analog converter. The digital to analog converter can generate all kinds of complicated signals right if you feed in a digital sequence. So, you can also generate sine waves using that. So, not every uh, signal generator that you see the output is not directly coming from the oscillator not necessarily it could be coming from an oscillator it could be coming from some other thing that generates that uh, generates the sinusoidal signal, but an oscillator will be at the uh, underlying functionality of any of these. Yeah. No, no, there will be an oscillation whether the uh, that output is directly coming out of the oscillator or goes through some other circuitry. One thing is of course, uh, that is a low frequency output. So, it is probably the internal oscillator of the oscilloscope is at a high frequency, maybe it is divided down using counters and then given to you. Okay. So, I mean you do not need to. So, let us say you want uh, periodic uh, signals of F naught and F naught by 2 and so on you probably would not make like an oscillator at f naught and f naught by 2 you will make 1 at f naught and divide it by 2. So, and there are other ways of uh, doing the same things that uh, use one oscillator and get all the signals that you want from there so, ok. So, now how should I make an oscillator give me some circuit to start off with L c yeah that is very easy uh, that is. Uh, If you do this, it will be an oscillator, right? That is, I am assuming ideal L and ideal C. So, I was planning to start with a different oscillator, but this is just as good a starting point. So, this is fine. So, this uh, what will be the output here? What will I see? I mean, first of all, the circuit has only one node or just two nodes, and I have to take the voltage across that, right? So, what is the voltage across that? Huh? What is it? Okay, so it will be okay, fine. I mean, let us not over generalize, that is not necessary anyway. Okay. So, now yeah this is an oscillator that is lossless L and lossless C if you connect it together uh, it is an oscillator right and what is this V p what is the amplitude of oscillation yeah it depends on the initial conditions on the uh, uh, capacitor voltage and the inductor current ok. Now, this is the ideal oscillator first of all you can never make this why uh, 
okay first there will be losses now that is one thing of course there will be losses and typically you can represent the loss of an inductor as a parallel resistor not a, i mean you can have more complicated and more loss models but the easiest thing to imagine is the wire has some resistance right so it's a series resistance and similarly the capacitance of the insulator may be leaking so it will have some loss as well so that's typical model uh, we can take only any one of them it's okay so this is i mean the moment you have a resistance there the oscillation will die out okay so how will you fix the situation so let me represent the loss of the whole thing by oops. single parallel resistor does not matter basically it represents the losses in the system. Now how do I get uh, sustaining or sustained oscillations from this yeah so this is the lossy tank and you connect minus r in parallel this resistance will this loss will cancel that loss or the negative loss will cancel the positive loss and you will be left with l and c ok this is fine so essentially every lc oscillator is some way a fancy way of connecting a negative resistance across the resonant circuit so that the loss of the circuit is compensated ok. Now uh, can we realize this exactly can we realize this minus r or what I think you might have foresee how would you make minus r huh? what is that diode yeah possibly ok yeah in a more abstract level if you have voltage control current source and connect it in feedback in the appropriate way you get a negative resistance right. If this is some g m times v x and it is connected up like that. So, here you get a conductance of minus g m right. If the current source were uh, pointing the other way you would get a positive resistor now you get a negative resistor. So, using a control source you can get a negative resistance. Now, first of all uh, you cannot make an exactly linear uh, control source there are because you use active elements it will always have non-linearity ok. So, now even if you could make it exactly linear this actually is not a desirable thing can you tell me what is undesirable about this. Let us say you have just the losses L and C in parallel, what might be undesirable about that? No, what extra capacitance? No, that is ok. So, that will only add to the capacitance C, that is fine. Frequency? It is fixed, ok, that is ok. What about the amplitude? Yeah, the amplitude is not fixed. Actually, that is not that is a problem. This will this is a purely linear circuit, and any other solution is also fine, right? Any other value of Vp including 0. Actually, this is not what you want in an oscillator, ok. So, in fact, uh, in reality, this will be nonlinear, and that nonlinearity will fix the amplitude, ok. So, all real oscillators. I will say minus r, but it is actually some nonlinear control source. And this fixes the amplitude. As you know, I mean, if you have a purely linear system, uh, it can have any solution, and any other solution proportional to that will also be a solution, right. And in fact, you do not want that, you want the amplitude also to be well determined, ok. So, an oscillator in general should have both frequency determining components and the frequency should be determined as accurately as possible. In this case that is clear what are the frequency determining components L and C ok, but it should also have some way of uh, determining the amplitude ok, some way of fixing the amplitude and what fixes the amplitude? What elements in the oscillator fix the amplitude? 
it is a loss mechanism and the nonlinear mechanism which is used to compensate the loss ok. So, these two are frequency determining components and these two will determine amplitude and if they are both exactly linear the amplitude is uncertain ok. I am actually this is this is somewhat uh, complicated and we would not go into like how to fix the amplitude of every oscillator that we discuss ok. So, what happens is eventually some non-linearity in the circuit will take over and that will limit the amplitude. For instance, if you make a if you make a make an oscillator using an op amp what do you think determines the amplitude? The saturation of the uh, saturation voltages of the op amp ok. The point is essentially if you want uh, where do you want the poles of the system to be if you want an oscillation with a constant amplitude on the JMA axis and you can never do this exactly ok and in fact it is not even desirable even if you can do it. Like I said uh, if you place it exactly on the JMA axis then any solution is fine that is uh, you can have 1 millivolt amplitude you can also have 1 volt amplitude. So, typically the poles are slightly in the right half plane. So, that will give you you can imagine I mean the mechanism is different in every particular oscillator. So, starting from 0 the amplitude will start to increase, but as the amplitude increases something in the circuit will limit it and it the easiest thing to imagine is let us say in case of op amp circuits the saturation voltages will limit ok. So, there will be some amplitude limiting mechanism in every oscillator and they are actually quite uh, somewhat complicated to study in some cases. We will see it in a particular case, but uh, uh, not in every case ok. So, I will show you some oscillation topologies which are potentially capable of giving oscillations. In some of them we will say what the amplitude is, in some others we will just leave it be. If you make them with op amps it will get limited by the saturation voltages. Is that ok? Any questions? So, since we started with L and C, so let us try to make this and see what happens. Make this in the sense again we are uh, limited by the fact that we do not know any transistors, we will still operate at the level of controlled sources ok. call it RP obviously RP is positive and this indicates the loss ok. And we already said that this can be compensated by a negative resistance minus R n ok and R n is positive. So, minus R n is negative and this will compensate the loss and I will label the conductances also this is G P and this is minus g n ok. And how could you generate this uh, minus g n? You take a transconductance, you take a voltage controlled uh, voltage source whose proportionality constant is g n. then you connect it up ok. So, between these two terminals now between that and ground you have a negative conductance value minus g is ok. So, what is the condition for this to start oscillating? I mean if I connect any value of g n it will work or what is the condition for it to start oscillating? 
voltage control current source did I say voltage source sorry. So, this is a voltage control current source what is the condition for it to start oscillating huh? no no I want it to start in a burst into oscillation ok I do not want the initial condition to die out. So, what is the condition huh? 1 by R p g n equals g n equals g p basically ok. So, for it to start oscillating g n should be greater than or equal to g p ok is not it. If g n is exactly equal to g p then the initial condition will give you an oscillation of constant amplitude. If g n is greater than g p it will give you an exponentially increasing amplitude ok. is fine. Obviously, I am mean essentially what I am saying is I mean you have an LC circuit with a loss and the loss can be represented by a parallel loss conductance G p. Now, you have to uh, compensate for this loss by connecting a negative resistance across the LC tank and obviously, the negative conductance should be more than the positive conductance. So, that it will compensate the loss otherwise it will eventually there is a net positive loss and whatever initial energy you have in L and C will die out ok. So, that is all this is saying. Now, let us take a voltage controlled uh, current source. If this is V x this is G n times V x and this is I out ok. And I will assume that it will go into some load or some short circuit. There is some path for the current to flow. What will be the I O versus V x characteristics of this? this is just a voltage controlled current source what is the characteristic straight line huh? it will be a straight line passing through the origin right obviously I O is G n times V x the slope will be G n ok. <coughs> Now, based on what you know about op amps, what do you expect as V x goes on increasing either in positive or negative direction what may happen? Hmm? Saturate. So, basically I mean it uh, no real controlled current source will give you infinite amount of current just like no real op amp will give you infinite infinitely large voltage ok. So, just like you have saturation of the output voltage in an op amp in any controlled current source that you implement there will be a saturation ok. Now, the actual characteristic may be more complicated than this, but for our purposes modeling this is enough ok. So, we will say that the current will saturate to minus I naught and plus I naught ok. Is this fine? Okay. Now, the question is what happens if I connect this uh, control source? Let me use the conductance, that is probably easier. 
this is V x and I connect the control source. I call it G P V x, but it has this characteristic now, it has also limiting, okay. it has saturation at plus minus I know. What will happen in this case? So let us say for simplicity first let me take uh, take only L C okay this is so that you get familiar with the kind of responses that you will see okay you have just L C there is no loss at all okay and the initial condition of the capacitor is some um, V naught and the initial condition of the inductor is 0 just for simplicity okay. So, what will be the output waveform? Huh? Yeah, clearly, because if you uh, plot uh, V x, which is the same as the capacitor voltage and I L, what happens is because you have uh, let us assume that V naught is positive, then you have a positive voltage here that will start increasing the inductor current, right and that will discharge the capacitor okay so it will start like this it will start with v naught and the inductor current itself will uh, how does that start uh, it will be it will start from zero and it will start with a positive slope with the polarity i've given assuming v naught is positive I think you must have solved problems of this type where you are given LC circuits. If you are given some other con initial condition on IL, what will happen? The amplitude and phase will be somewhat different. Okay, so that is some algebra that you can calculate. Okay, so the simplest thing is to assume that there is some voltage across the capacitor and no current through the uh, inductor. Then you will get a sinusoid whose amplitude is the initial capacitor voltage. Is this okay? this fine or any questions about this ok. Now, let us assume the same initial conditions there is some loss of course, if you just had this what will happen is this will start decaying right it will do something like that right but now we also have our compensating negative conductance gn okay and let's assume that gp equals gn right and you start with some initial condition on the uh, capacitor what will happen what is going to happen if gp equals gn yeah so if we assume that so basically uh, if we assume that it is not the current source is not going into saturation the controlled current source right then it is very clear the scenario is exactly like this the current in the uh, inductor will come from the capacitor ok. So, this is how this current will go ok and the current from this simply goes into the resistor to compensate the loss ok. I do not want to sit and calculate the algebra, but you understand if somehow the amplitude or the initial condition is such that this uh, the current through the control current source does not exceed plus or minus I naught then it is exactly like a linear circuit right because 
between these limits after all we have assumed a straight line characteristic. So, if you do not hit those limits you never see the nonlinearity. This is okay, but this is still undesirable because that means that the amplitude can be anything still dependent on the initial condition right. Okay. The amplitude will uh, still depend on the initial condition as long as it does not go into saturation. So, basically you still have an uncertain amplitude is that okay? because I, I think you understand that if you have a purely linear L and C the amplitude is uncertain it is uh, the amplitude depends on the initial conditions. Okay. Now, if you have a purely linear L and C and a linear loss resistive loss and you have a compensating G n. If you if that is also linear this situation is exactly the same as lossless L C okay, because G p will exactly cancel G n and then uh, you do not have any uh, saturation issues. But this is still again like I said not a desirable thing because you do not have uh, uh, control on the amplitude okay. and amplitude is very much dependent on the initial condition. Okay. So, now clearly what is the solution if you want some control on the initial condition what should happen? You should somehow get it to saturate. So, how will that? So, if you are given an L C network it has some loss. So, what should you what is where is the degree of freedom to choose so that it will definitely enter saturation. Yeah, you have to basically choose G n to be greater than G p right. So, whatever amplitude you start off with it will start increasing even if you start from whether you start from 1 millivolt amplitude or a volt it will start increasing because if the control source is in the linear region you have L c and a net negative conductance in parallel. So, that means that the poles are where in the right half plane. Okay. So, the amplitude will start increasing exponentially, but that means that I mean if the voltage amplitude starts increasing the current that is uh, going into go, uh, flowing in the circuit also starts increasing exponentially. Okay. Uh, so, once you uh, exceed the saturation limit right for instance what are these limits what is the input voltage at which the current saturates I naught by G n. Okay. Once the oscillation amplitude exceeds I naught by G n the current will current source will saturate. Okay. So, then the amplitude will get fixed to some value I mean I am not saying it will get fixed exactly at that point, but it will get fixed to some value that we will determine for this particular circuit we can in some limiting condition is this okay. So, this way regardless of how you start it will always go to the same value is that clear because however you, uh, small an amplitude you start with initially if it is in the linear region it will start blowing up. Okay and it will start blowing up and eventually it will drive this control source into saturation. So, after that exactly where it stabilizes we have to calculate, but it will be some particular value I mean given a certain characteristic of G n given values of uh, I naught and G n it will I mean you can uniquely determine the amplitude is this okay. So, you have to choose G n to be greater than G p. power exactly. So, no, no, which I are we talking about the same I is not flowing through to have right half plane poles right. So, what I are you talking about here? But that is not the same as flowing here right the what is same between these two is the voltage. So, if this is uh, let us say let us assume that it is a sinusoid V p cos omega naught t what is the power dissipated in uh, the positive loss V p square by 2 times G p ok. Sorry this is uh, minus G n. So, what is the power generated here? Uh, v p square by 2 times g n. So, this has to be greater than that ok. So, I think you are if you had a series uh, resonant circuit if you represented the loss as a series resistance and the compensating stuff as a series negative resistance then the negative resistance has to be more than the positive resistance ok. This is clear it is correct the condition is correct obviously 
the power that you inject from the compensating control source has to be more than the power that is dissipated otherwise it won't start oscillating right it will eventually die out this is okay so you start with uh, gn greater than gp then what happens is that the amplitude starts blowing up the eventually the control source will reach saturation and depending on the value at which it saturates there will be some unique amplitude now okay this is not dependent on initial condition that's the point i'm trying to make okay it will start doing something okay no no that's not a sustainable solution right because uh, if you you are saying this current will become you are saying that this current will become constant and equal to i not it th this becomes i not and that i not will flow through the capacitor that's what you're saying ah uh. yeah yeah that's right vccs will be saturated in every cycle that's what you want right i mean if you have a periodic solution that means that every period should look the same as every other period so the control volt uh, i mean it's not spending all its time in saturation because the voltage across this is still let's say i'll draw it as a sinusoid as long as the voltage is within plus i not by gn and minus i not by gn it is not saturated so it will spend some time over in the linear region and some other time in saturation okay we'll see what we'll get but let's not worry about the exact waveform now you are uh, now saying that the waveform will not be exactly a sinusoid that is true that is very much true and that's true of every oscillator and i have to also say that uh, a lot of cases what is important in the oscillator is the frequency that is how good each period i mean how good all the periods are of the same duration okay how well uh, the period is controlled okay now there are some cases where you also need a sinusoidal shape okay so for now let's ignore the shape and even in this we'll show that if the quality factor is high enough it will be nearly sinusoidal okay so what happens now is that the oscillation amplitude which is vx it will be something like this okay it will exceed these right i'll still draw it as a sine wave we'll see what the waveform is it can be calculated we probably won't go into the detailed waveform calculation but we can calculate the amplitude so what happens is in this region this is a linear negative conductance and we also said gn is more than gp it is putting more energy into this than what is being dissipated okay and in the saturated region it actually won't put in any energy it turns out uh, or it will actually be the this source also will be uh, somewhat lossy and then uh, the average of the power that is given by this control source will be equal to the average power dissipated in gp that has to be the case right because where else will the power go there is some power generated here and some power dissipated here so the two have to balance each other because there is no power dissipation in either l or c okay so another way to think about it is we can't make first of all we can't make exactly linear gn and we also cannot make uh, two things exactly equal to each other we could not make gn equals gp even if that were a desirable solution so what we do is you can think of this as uh a and in this region in the linear region it gives you a negative conductance what is the conductance in this region let's say the characteristic iv characteristic was flat what is the conductance huh what is it zero okay so if you think of only this flat regions it's like not connecting anything right so roughly speaking on average we are compensating this uh, gp by 
having more than G p for some duration of the cycle and 0 for some other duration of the cycle. Is this okay? I have many ways to think about this or the other ways what we described earlier that it starts with sinusoidal oscillation. Let us assume that the initial condition or the initial conditions are quite small. Then the amplitude of the sinusoids will start blowing up because as long as it is in the linear region we know that the poles will be in the right half plane. Okay. So, as it starts blowing up the current source will enter saturation and once it enters saturation it is actually putting out less energy than what is being dissipated in the positive loss conductance G p. So, is exactly equal to the power dissipated in the loss conductance. Is this okay? Any questions here? So, the points that we have gone through are that first of all you cannot make a perfectly linear oscillator right. If you have a linear system with poles on the imaginary axis it will give you a sustained oscillation, but we actually uh, it is quite difficult to make that exactly. In fact, it is not possible you will always have some nonlinearity. Now, even if you could make it I said that it is not desirable because then the amplitude is some uncertain value right. It can be a millivolt, it can be a volt, it can be anything. So, you will always have some nonlinearity. Now, the exact details of nonlinearity and how to control it, it is like way beyond the scope of this course, we would not do that. We do it for this limited case and for other cases we kind of treat it as a linear circuit and move on. But we do know that uh, from our experience with op amps there will be some nonlinearity in the circuit that is going to limit it because nothing will have swing limits of infinity right. In case of op amp circuits it is the saturation voltage, here in case of uh, voltage controlled current sources it will be the saturation current. Okay. Now, you also have to make sure that it reaches those saturation levels. Okay. First of all making g n smaller than g p that just does not work because the uh, oscillations will die out. Making g n equals g p is also not a good thing because then you are not guaranteed that it will reach the saturation level. So, you start with g n more than g p so that it definitely reaches the saturation levels and again then there are different ways of thinking about it that essentially for a portion of the cycle uh, this g n is overcompensating the loss and for uh, some remainder of the portion it is under compensating it. So, on average it is exactly compensating the loss in the L c time. Is this okay? This is like uh, making I mean if you treat this as a negative feedback system with loop gain you do not make the loop gain exactly minus 1 maybe you make it minus 2. Okay, so, that it starts oscillating with the right half plane poles with the blowing up amplitude which eventually gets limited by nonlinearity. Any questions about any of these things? Some of these are little unfamiliar, but at least intuitively it should be clear. So, now there is a particular simple case of this first of all it turns out in practice once you make g n more than g p you are guaranteed oscillations and if you take arbitrary values of g n the solution can be a little bit hard to calculate. Okay. The way to calculate it is you assume that there is a periodic solution here. What does it mean to have a periodic solution? How can you represent a periodic signal? Uh, one of the ways to do it is using Fourier series. Okay. Now, there will be some uh, periodic solution here and that periodic signal will create some other periodic signal here and you can write Kirchhoff's current and voltage law for every harmonic okay, and balance it, but this is just way too complicated. We will not do this, but I am saying that is how you can actually if you want to you can find the solution. Right. So, you can find the solution for any uh, characteristic like this for which g n is more than g p. Now, in practice it turns out that once g n is more than g p we do not really worry too much and whether it is like this or like that it does not matter all that much. Okay. So, there is one particular case for which it is quite easy to calculate the output which is what is the value of g n here infinite. Okay. 
but of course, I mean infinite does not mean it will blow up infinitely, the current is still limited. Okay. So, in this case, it is quite easy to calculate the uh, amplitude, and the other cases are kind of close to this. You will get a slightly smaller amplitude, but uh, I think with this, you get the essence of uh, the whole thing. Okay. So, how would we go about doing this? What does it say if uh, the characteristic of the control source is blue? Uh, the blue curve that I have drawn, what can you say about like there is some quantity in the circuit that is uh, restricted now, right? What? Huh? V x is 0, then there is no oscillation. What is that? Ah, the current here, the current delivered by this obviously is either plus or in minus i naught, it has to be, right? Okay. And what is the voltage across this? what waveform do you expect? Let us assume that the quality factor is quite high that is uh, the loss was kind of small to begin with. Okay. We will uh, continue from this. First imagine that there is some periodic voltage here. Okay. If there is a periodic voltage here, what is the current through this? The period V x is periodic, right? What is the average value of V x? Why? Why why is the uh, why is the average value of Zx V x 0? We have an inductor here, right? The average value across an inductor has to be 0. Okay. So the average value of V x is 0 and V x is periodic. Finally, we know that this will settle to some periodic solution. So, what is the waveform that is coming out of this control source. It does not matter what periodic signal it is, what is the output coming out of there? It is a square wave. Okay. So, you know that this is going to be square wave with exactly same frequency as the oscillation frequency. Okay. Now, that current assuming that this network had a high quality factor to begin with, what, what is the next simplification? As a high quality factor, what does it mean? See, we know this current now, right? We know this current meaning we know its shape. Okay, it is plus i naught and minus i naught, and this frequency is the frequency of oscillation. Okay, so now what can you say if uh, what comment can you make if I tell you that this uh, resonant network has a very high quality factor? Think about it. what. No, no, R is there, but uh, again think about the representation of this uh, square wave and see basically from this current we have to find the voltage, right? How will you do that? The current has Fourier components and no, no, R p greater than 1 is not a meaningful statement, right? 